This is what a memory leak on a Node.js server can look like. It can either crash your server or make it slow without you even noticing it. If you want to avoid this kind of situations, then this is the right video for you. And I also have a playlist with similar Node.js related video. So in this video, we're going to talk about memory management and memory leaks in Node.js, what the symptoms are and what can cause them, and of course, how to prevent and debug them. If you're ready, let's get started. All right, friends, let's start with a blackboard explanation, as we always do to better understand the topic, in this case, memory management. So imagine we have a variable called x and it holds some kind of a arbitrary value, okay? And I'm going to draw this rectangle, which represents a space or a point in the memory, okay? And it's going to point, so the variable is going to point to this space or a point in the memory. But the thing is, it doesn't have to be just the normal variable, a primitive value. It can also be a function, okay? Just a normal function. I'm going to call it example. It doesn't do anything. It's just an arbitrary function. And it's also going to point somewhere in the memory to this rectangle, for example. So I'm also going to draw an arrow just to indicate that we have two different val variables and they are pointing to two different places in the memory. Okay, but how does Node.js know when to remove those references? Well, it's done with the help of the garbage collector, which is implemented on the V8 JavaScript engine. Okay, so garbage collector is able to mark or find nodes that are no longer referenced, referenced from anywhere else with the help of this algorithm called mark and sweep. Well, it basically marks and sweeps those nodes. And the memory in Node.js is built or looks something like a heap, okay? It's basically a heap and a heap is just a tree of nodes, okay? So we have a couple of nodes. Let me put them for you here, all right? And the root one is gonna be the root object, which in the browser is, is the window object, but in Node.js it's the global. And this line is gonna go here. But we also have one island which doesn't have any references, right, from other nodes. So it's the one that has to be removed or garbage collected. And the way garbage collector works, it's basically, let's make it green. So ideally it would be marked and then collected, meaning deleted. But since it's an island, even though I removed it, it would actually cause a problem and not get removed, okay? So what are the cases when it doesn't get removed and we have memory leaks? Because this is what we call a memory leak. So first of all, when you don't clear intervals or for example, timers, right? For example, imagine you have a clear or set interval or set timeout and you do not clear them, right? And some other use cases such as global variables. You know, it's a bad practice to have any global variables in your code but those can actually be a source of memory leaks. Also closures and unreferenced nodes if you're working in a browser. So by the way, I have a video on memory leaks in a browser or in JavaScript, go check it out. I'm going more in depth on some causes and symptoms when doing front-end development and avoid to avoid memory leaks. But memory leaks, at least when you're analyzing them, would have a specific pattern. So this would be our memory and it's going to go up like in cycles, like in steps, okay? If you see something like this in your analysis when it comes to the memory, it's a, it's a clear indication of a memory leak. But there are some complicated, oops, not like this. There are also some complicated scenarios when it goes up, but it also gets garbage collected. But the next cycle is just a bit bigger than the previous one. So it's not that easy to detect this kind of cases, okay? But basically, this is what the memory consumption would look like when you, whenever you have a memory leak, so to say, right? And let's bring this island node back, which ideally should be in garbage, garbage collected. And just to indicate that there are no references, neither from one of the nodes that we already have, nor from anywhere in the program that is already running, meaning in the run runtime, we have a variable that is not referenced from anywhere. And this is something that has to be garbage collected. But as you can see on the right, we wrote some cases when it does not get garbage collected. Now, 
what we're going to do is we're going to go to this express app that I have as an example. What we basically have is just a simple app, which is running on a local host 3000 and slash is going to trigger this controller, which executes the code below. Okay, it's basically an express app that all of you have definitely worked with. All right, so what we have here, first of all, is an anti pattern. Do you see this let tasks? It's basically a global variable. Okay, and what did we learn before? Never have global variables, they cause memory leaks. The reason is, Global variables are attached on the root node. So window in the front end development in the browser, or in case of in, in the case of Node.js on global. And the garbage collector does not know whether they're needed or not because they're always attached to the root. So they get stuck there forever. So this is our first source of a memory leak. That's what we're gonna see later. Another scenario is with closures. And so look at this tasks.push method. It has a callback inside. So this callback is accessing the dot request object and the callbacks are ambiguous when it comes to garbage collection, collecting, right? The garbage collector is not going to know whether this callback has finished. So it's not going to remove this reference to the variable that is accessing outside. And in terms of this tasks array, by the way, it's still going to get stuck there even if this controller above gets executed and finished. So imagine we have another controller, which points to some other URL. And if it's also accesses this tasks array, it also makes it even worse. So this task is going to get stuck in the memory for sure forever. But coming back to closures, again, a callback that the garbage collector does not know whether it's finished or not. So this request.headers is going to get stuck in the memory. It's not related to tasks, but I just wanted to mention the tasks as well. So another, oh, by the way, let me just extend the comment. So closure with an external variable reference, just to make it clear. All right, the next case that we have is simply a huge array with data, right? We have 100 million elements, and we're filling it with some garbage from the request object, because the request object is actually pretty big. But what I would suggest to do in this case is to use some cache or some in memory cache, right? On the browser, we have some local storage, we have uh, small databases, we have session storage. In Node.js, we don't really have anything similar. So you can use some third party packages like node cache or memcached or something else. All right, the next thing is this weird object here. First of all, it has this property called a bad object and it has a cyclic reference. Cyclic references are always bad because this bad object is pointing to the original request object, right? So luckily Node.js already knows how to deal with cyclic references. So the garbage collector is going to know whether it's accessed from anywhere else or not, uh, but still it's a really bad pattern. Okay, another one that we might deal with is in our event emitters within Node.js. Yes, Node.js has event emitters, if you didn't know, and you can pass data around your application using them. Um, you can call your event emitter the way you want, but in our case, I just call it event emitter. So they're quite similar when it comes to how they work to add event listeners like that you have with DOM nodes, but event emitters have different event names. Like this one has a start, so it's, as soon as the start event fires, we're gonna console log useless event emitter. And what you need to do, just like with event listeners on the front end, is simply to remove them, okay? So you're gonna call remove listener and you're going to pass the name of the event that you want to remove. If you don't remove them, they also get stuck in the memory, okay? And the next point is actually quite similar to um, event listeners or event emitters when it comes to removing stuff. If you didn't know, again, we have set timeouts, but again, if you didn't know, you actually need to make sure that you get rid of them as soon as you um, don't need them anymore. So let's assign it to a variable, call it set with or res with timeout. And here, as soon as the timeout has finished, I'm simply going to clear the timeout with this function called clear timeout, okay? 
Always do that because otherwise the timeouts gets stuck in your memory and can cause you problem. So what I want to do is to demonstrate how memory leaks uh, would look like. But so I'm going to delete some of this code for you just to make it cleaner. But I'm still going to make sure that we have some noticeable memory leaks. Okay, so I'm still going to keep the set timeout. I'm going to remove the clear timeout and we have the closure and yeah, we have the global variable. This should be enough to notice the memory leak. Okay, so in the console, I'm going to run node index.js normally, but in this case, just to see the memory leaks, I'm going to add this option called minus minus trace underscore GC, which stands for global uh, garbage collector. And here you can see that the scavenge line finds or specifies how much memory is being used and it also being collected by the garbage collector. All right, so this is our Express app and 7.7 .7 or 9.5 megabytes are used, so which is pretty normal. But here I have this file called stress minus test, which is going to curl this URL, so our main URL, a lot of times. It's basically a non stopping loop, so it's going to be curling it every millisecond. So what I'm going to do is basically run it like this. And now we have a lot of bytes data. So it's just gibberish. But look at this. Our memory is growing 81, 86, 91. So just to make sure that my computer does not explode, I'm going to cancel the, um, the script. And here we're stuck at 101 megabytes. Okay, it gets garbage collected. Now it's down to 70. As you can see, the garbage collector works. But what I wanted to show you is that you actually can diagnose your Node.js app, uh, even if you don't have the browser. Another cool thing is that you have this V8 memory snapshots, and you can also use memory uh, utilities to get good data. But another way is to actually use an inspector like this, minus minus inspect, and now we can actually go to the browser. And in the browser, just make sure that the Express app is running. Whenever you write Chrome um, column uh, slash slash inspect, you're gonna open this. And here you just press on the file. And here we have, yeah, selected this JavaScript instance. So I'm going to trigger a memory leak as well, or rather a script that shows every memory leaks. Now let's go to this file again. and. As you already know from the previous video, you can take snapshots and compare the memory. All right. So we took one snapshot, which is 61 megabytes. Let's take another one. And it's obviously going to be bigger because our memory is growing and growing. All right. This one is 93 megabytes. And what I like to do is basically comparison and make sure that you're comparing snapshot two to snapshot one. And look at this size delta. It's always plus. So we have 7 million new bytes, all right? And if you open this, not closure, but array, you can see that we have a lot of arrays with the same size. This is very uh, bizarre. It already means that we are appending something to the array, and it's obviously the tasks array that we are appending to, okay? Let's stop the script. Okay, so we discussed different ways of how you can uh, analyze the memory, but one of the cool ones that I missed out and I actually like or suggest you to use this on the production is PM2. So just like this and using NPX, you can run PM2 and it's going to start the process in the background and it's going to show you the CPU usage and the memory usage. And by running NPX PM2 so that you don't install it, logs, it's going to show you the logs. Please disregard the red ones. It was the old log but it starts the express application for you. And you can, of course, cancel it anytime. Let's start our stress test again and see how you can inspect it with PM2. So again, in PX PM2 monit, which stands for monitoring. And, and you, as you can see, uh, 57 megabytes are used in our memory at the moment. And let me start the stress test again and we have a lot of bytes coming in and the memory is now 
Okay, it's not one, it's just hidden. It's actually over 100. But I just wanted to show you how you can use PM2 for memory monitoring. PM2 is a very cool tool that you can use on production on, on, in your Docker in, uh, image. And it can restart the application whenever you run out of memory or some exception happens, okay? Now our memory is above 200. But let me run the same command again. And you're gonna see that this number would actually change. Okay, 322, now it's over 300. And just like this, you can test your memory or analyze your memory with PM2. Okay, we just need to make sure that we stop the process like this. And now you can see that our index process has finally stopped. Hey there, it's me again. I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for watching this video and smashing the like button. And if you wanna stay up to date with such cool topics, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss whenever a new video is out. And I'm gonna see you in the next one.